Hello everybody and welcome to a new week. Um, it's Laura Husband here from Hairdressers Journal International and thank you so much for joining us this morning for our session with Colin McAndrew. Um, he is Medusa's Managing Director. He's also Weller Professionals UK and Ireland Creative Style Director and if that wasn't enough he's also a Shea's um, Business Director of the Year. So this morning he's going to be sharing with us his expert hints and tips on how he has grown his colour business with master colour experts and his plans for 2021 and this session is supported by Weller Professionals UK and Ireland so if you have a look in the comments on both whether you're tuning in on Zoom or on Facebook and um, you'll see some information about the master colour programme which is Weller's top accolade in colour and it marks you as one of the industry's top elite colourists. Um, the course spans over six to 11 months and involves 14 days of studio tuition and it's available at any Weller studio, so London, Dublin, Edinburgh and Manchester and the start dates all throughout the year so you can contact your nearest studio for more information but we've also got a link in the comments if you want some more information about that. So thank you Colin for joining us this morning. Hi Laura, how are you? I'm very well thank you, how are you? I'm great, I'm great, I'm, um, I'm really excited to be doing this actually and uh, thank you again for your lovely introduction, that was nice to hear. Oh brilliant, well it's great to have you with us this morning and me and Colin are going to be having a good old chat and um, I've got some questions I want to share with Colin but if you have any questions you want to directly share with Colin just do put them into the comments as well and we'll try and get through as much of those as we can. So maybe should we just maybe start Colin with talking about you as um, our HA's Business Director of the Year, maybe you can just tell us a little bit about what you learned about your colour business um, over 2020. Well, I think I think like everyone, you know, we we obviously had the challenges of lockdown, but we also sort of seen that um, clients, you know, were were really sort of um, engaged in making sure that they invested in themselves when they, when we came back from lockdown. So our colour services were probably hyper high um, after lockdown. Obviously, doing. Um, the, the traditional what I would call sort of your maintenance colours but then very quickly we were back into doing our sort of trend blend and sort of fashion focused um, colour so that was really good we also had that little bit of clients sort of embracing what had happened so we had quite a lot of colour changes um, in the latter part of last year which was um, good bad and challenging you know uh, you never want to see a client who's a very regular colour getting something that's sort of lower maintenance um but no i mean it was quite steady for us you know we, we we sort of hit all our kpis constantly our kpi for color in the salon is above 55 percent. that's our sort of minimum target um, and we managed to achieve that so no i was i was very very sort of happy with the last sort of six months of last year Brilliant. That's fantastic, Colin. And maybe should we just talk a little bit about what you would say as a salon owner are the benefits of sending um, your team members on um, colour specific education courses like the Master Colour Programme at Weather yeah. Professionals? Yeah, I mean, I think within Medusa, we, we sort of work really closely with Wella anyway. So regardless of the Master Colour Programme, we, we do a lot of sort of education um, we have Jade, who's our account uh, manager for training. So, so we do a lot of bits, but our master color program, when we send someone on it, it's um, it's a little bit of everything. It's a sort of well done to that individual for having a very good sort of business within the salon already. Um, uh, a real sort of thank you for, I suppose, their sort of attitude and effort is how we try and sort of use this. You know, it's a it's a it's such a highly regarded uh, program that, you know, it's a huge investment of money, time, effort, that we want to make sure that we give it to the right people. And I really feel that for us, it's it's a massive sort of thank you and loyalty. You know, that's one of the, the key things that I, I sort of try and instill in our Master Colour Experts. Definitely. Well, actually, that um, that's interesting, actually, Colin. How many colourists in your salon have um, gone on to complete the Master Colour Programme? So we've had, within the sort of last, sort of, let's say, five years, we've had 11 people do it. Oh, wow. um, our target right now, so we've been thinking about this a lot last year and speaking to Wella sort of already in the coming year, is we would like to have a minimum of two um 
stylists within the salons each have a master colour programme or being master colour experts. So that's our focus. So we've got a couple of salons where we maybe need to make a little bit more focus. And then we've got a couple of salons where you go, because you've already got two or three already. So, you know, they don't need as much focus. But we we want, as a, as a base group, a minimum of two in every salon. And then we're quite happy to grow that because not only does it give the team members like a huge personal skill, you know, for just for troubleshooting throughout the salon, they're, they're the sort of go-to expert, you know. When I'm mixing up colour, I'm, I'm asking them, what do they think? You know, what, what, you know, I'm thinking of doing this. Does that sound okay? So there's a lot of pressure on it because they become the sounding board for the whole yeah. group, you know. So mm. it, it is really important that you get the right people uh, on it. But, yeah, so our aim is to grow it. So I think this year we'll probably do two to three people on the Massa Colour programme. And then next year I would like to sort of do um, about eight people. Brilliant. Brilliant. And that, that would sort of sit above our base level, mm. you know. So for us, that yeah. would mean, right, we've got the base done, now we can just start adding it. Um, and that's certainly the plan. Definitely. And if you found once and one of your colorists has, has done the Master Colour Programme, do they, are they then able to train other team members within your salons? H hugely, hugely. Yeah. So, you know, that's a, that's one of the, the, the greatest things as well, is, you know, the, the, the ability to educate as well. Because if they, you know, that individual has really been immersed in a sort of classroom environment or a seminar environment for, you know, up to 14 days. So they come back with not only a huge understanding of how to colour brilliantly, but also to really sort of maximise that colour. And then they can translate that much easier than someone just having brilliant natural knowledge you know you know you, we've all got this something I the, the the little wizard or witch in the salon who can just create stuff but they don't necessarily know how they've done it sometimes you know they've just yeah. got a natural instinct um master color program you know it, it doesn't dilute that it just makes it much more this is why and you know with everything you know with you know we have to be so careful and so cautious within the salons now that's just an added bonus to have that sort of level of security yeah, you know through definitely. the salon you know that that mm. knowledge is power for that type thing most definitely and even with those whizzes do you find that they come when they've done a course like the master color program do they, does their confidence and their ability and what they can do does that go up once they've attended the course yeah, I mean, I, I would say that I'm biased, but I think everybody in the company is really, really good at colour, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, but you, you do see a real elevation in, um, I want to say attitude, but I don't know if it's if attitude's the right word. And just maybe just an inner peace, an inner confidence, you know, a real sort of um, calmness, that's it. You know, there's a very bit of calmness to your master colour experts within the salon. You know, they know how to deliver and what, you know. So um, I think that's a big thing, you know, just a super confidence. And that just then filters through, you know, because they're, they're sharing that every single day, either on purpose by actually involving or just presence. Definitely. You know, so I think it's, yeah, I think it's a massive thing. Well, it's a little bit of an elephant in the room, but I will say it, obviously, in England today, there's going to be an announcement on reopening. So at least reopening is starting to kind of reach people's mindsets, which is yeah. fantastic. Um, so from your point of view, how do you use um, the course and how do you promote your salon's expertise in colour with your clients um, in, to make sure that you kind of explain to clients that, you know, we've got this special colour expertise? So... So I, I think um, I have to hold my hands up and I'm probably not maximising it enough. Um, and it's it's one of these things that says, um, it should be higher up in my priority list and it is on my list. <laughs> we, we've got simple stuff like, you know, having, um, we have an MCP WhatsApp chat where, where we sort of share information and just sort of talk about ideas and stuff. We have talked in the past about doing some different pricing and 
we've just sort of always backed away from it purely mm. pretty much from like an aesthetic point of view just now we don't want the price list to have like so much complication yeah but we are moving forward to thinking right actually no you know like every master color expert needs to charge the top for color within the company so we're working on that and then on social media we are working on trying to enhance uh, the sort of searchability of master color experts and that's just a little thing you know above the the grid you know these little circles just making sure that we have mcp and then using the sort of proper tags as well you know but I, i'll hold my hands up and say we could be better at that and uh, you know i was hastily going to do stuff over the weekend and i thought that's just so fake that I'm not going to do that but yeah it's much better space definitely yeah. <laughs> so, is that, so would you say um, and uh, we love your honesty Colin so would yeah. you say that's one of your goals for your color business in 2021 is to sort of kind of uh, you've got all this uh, expertise uh, and you want to shout yeah. about it I would say our color foundation is fantastic so I think now what we need to really let happen and let people be aware of is actually how good this elite group are mm. and that we're adding to that group constantly you know we've got two people on the mcp who would have finished sorry master color expert who would have finished last year but unfortunately they're still going through their process so once they finish we'll then start adding new people in in 2021 fantastic do you have any other goals for your color business um in, in terms of trying to grow it in so I, I think that I, I feel that there's a lot of uncertainty about what trends are going to actually happen you know um the majority of creatives in our industry we've not done photo shoots we've not done anything that maybe sort of lights the fuse of this is something to to buy into mm -hmm. so i think it will be really interesting to see where color goes i do believe that um you know, there's more and more people understanding the sort of negative impact of having so many balayage experts, you know, and going back to, you know, it's not to knock balayage, we do tons of balayage, mm -hmm. but it is quite low maintenance and, and that's an issue, you know, and that's going to be a huge issue for every salon going forward that, you know, we need to capitalise on clients understanding the demand and getting there. And also, I just feel that not enough people charge properly for balayage, you know, so it's that's a huge issue. Um, so I think that, you know, if balayage is going to stay, we need to make it a bigger ticket price, you know, a bigger a bigger ticket item to make sure that people really maximise that. You know, we, we've had people in the past who were, ex you know, almost 100% fully booked. Yeah. But they've done 12 clients a week. <laughs> you know you, you, you know some of it you were kind of going well yeah it's easy to be that busy but you know if if, if color trends change and, and they do obviously constantly you know you may have a problem in the future um so yeah you know so i think there is that thing for me i am and i make no um apologies about this i'm obsessed with frequency you know so we need to make sure that toning is a massive part of our business you know, we need to make sure that we are constantly getting that client in for a blow drying tone, you know, for that night out and stuff, make it special. So I think that's really important. Definitely. Is personalization a big um, aspect for you as well, Colin, kind of customizing whichever color? Yeah, you're I mean, I mean, we, we talk about it two ways in, in the salon. So, you know, my my little thing, and I'm, I'm not up there with the, the sort of great colorists in the company or anything um, you know I, I talk about color like food and I you know so and I think that's just one of the things so straight away regardless of personalization on the hair that's personalization you know we, we're surrounded mm. by brilliant salons in Edinburgh but they can't go in and ask for a raspberry ruffle color yeah you know they can mm. ask for four stroke six yeah. If I talk that manner, you know, so so we always try and talk like sort of less technical shade chart and much mm. more a feeling and a vibe. Um, and then I just think every single colour that we do is personalised. But the issue is, is that 
so many hairdressers, you know, the, the first, the second time they told the client what they were doing. And the third and fourth time they don't. So the client now suddenly feels that this is normal, where actually it's, it may not have changed that much, but it's yeah. still really unique and really distinct. Yeah, definitely. And it's up to us just to make sure that, you know, the, that we communicate it all the time. Mm. You know, I am, um, I have a couple of clients and I, and I don't know if people will be like in horror, but I've not changed their hair for 10 years, color wise. Mm. But we, and it's only two clients, they really spring to mind. But we pretty much start every appointment with your color looks amazing. We can, and what, so I get paranoid that they think I'm not willing to change them. Yeah, whereas you all, are, but yeah. All, I, all, all I'm trying to say to that client is it actually looks beautiful. Yeah. Why would we muck about with mm. it? You know, we can change your haircut and stuff, but you know, that tone suits you, the the wearability, the longevity, everything is perfect for you, the maintenance, you know. So I think that's just as important to tell the client why you're not changing mm. them sometimes. You exactly. know, we always, always go into Yeah, definitely. And always giving that consultation. If you never you know they're gonna go for the same thing, you've still got to start from the beginning and make sure they are yeah. happy with what they have. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think it's so important to because it just highlights that they don't think I'm just looking at them mm. as an easy two hundred pound. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, you still yeah, want them to feel valued. I still want them mm. to know that if they ever change their mind, I'm willing to sort of step up and talk. But equally, I'm also going to say I'm not sure if I can do it any better than what I've done. No, exactly. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's that honesty piece as well, Colin. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, it's confidence. Definitely. I love what you were saying about the food as well, because it's like when you go to a restaurant, I think we're all really missing that right now. But when the, yeah. the, the waiter starts talking about the special dish of the day and it kind of gets your kind of juices yeah. flowing and you think, oh, I want that. So that oh. relating it to food just gets people a bit more excited, doesn't it? So, you know, th this is what salons and teams don't understand is that that waiting staff, right, they've been told at the start of their shift that they have to sell this, you know, fish has only got two days to go, so we want rid of it tonight. Mm. The mussels are off tomorrow, so this goes out tonight. So they're told what to sell as the specials. And, mm. and then everybody, I had a laugh with friends about this recently, you know, everybody goes, what would you recommend to the waiter? Yeah. Now, that waiter might love spicy food, and I might like really plain food. Mm. Why am I asking a complete random stranger <laughs> yeah. who doesn't know me? Who doesn't he might be allergic type? to the one thing yeah, that you love or something. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, ha hairdressers and stylists across the world, we, we don't want to think of ourselves as salespeople. And, you know, but the reality is, is we, we buy from a lot of people. Mm. And all we need to do is just give our expertise because that client in that chair is begging for it. Mm. That's why they picked you. And the first and second time is when they will, you know, they've not bought into you. They've not sort of um, committed to you as an individual or the salon. And they're coming to you because they expect a level. And like I said really earlier, it's the third and fourth visit that we all fail a little bit in the industry. And that's when we really need to make sure that we have the conversation of why we're doing the same. Yeah, you know, definitely. Or what's next. Mm. And that's when the client journey really starts. And mm. colour is a massive part of that. You know, like colour should be at the forefront of everybody's um, growth business. Because most clients can go and explain a haircut. You know, most clients can go to any salon in, in my city in Edinburgh and ask for a beautiful bob. Mm, yeah. But they'll struggle to ask for this kind of colour or this tone effect mm. that someone done. So I just feel that the sort of um, your core regular business is, is colour. Definitely. And like you say, that is the opportunity to have your USP for your salon, which they can't get elsewhere and yep. hence why it's worth that investment and speaking yep. about the investment from the master color course uh, with weller professionals and um, just to sort of touch on the the price of it because it's not a cheap course is it yeah it's um two thousand four hundred pounds plus vat 
Would yeah. you say that's a worthwhile investment when we're talking about the kind of the USP of color and how that will keep your clients coming back? So would you say that is a worthwhile investment for you as a salon owner? So, you know, I, I think that it's, it's just trying to be as open as upfront as possible. You know, first of all, that's the investment of the course. There's 14 days out the salon. Depending on how you do that, that's either paid. It's loss of income during that time. But I do genuinely think it's worth it. And it's it's worth it on a sort of few sort of areas. The, the, the first one is sort of, for me, I want people to come and join my company because we will invest in you. You know, we're not going to give it away. You know, we're not going to just go, all right, you know, the next 50 people who walk through the doors as team members are going to be given the MCP. But I want to prove that I put my money where my mouth is. So, you know, we will invest in you. I think it does create a loyalty from the team. You know, um, I think the team understand that they've never had that level of education before. And, you know, there's not many courses that will top it after. You know, so it is a real sort of pinnacle piece. Um, their colour percentage goes up massively, individually. And then I do sort of see that sort of ripple effect through the salon. You know, I do, I do really notice that, you know, people suddenly start looking at the good ideas. Mm -hmm. so, so it is, to me, it's, it's a really worthwhile investment. And not just monetary, like I said, in sort of that respect and that sort of, um, team ethic, I think, is is one of the things that it really helps cement. Um, and if you've got your contracts right, then it, it you know you make sure that you get the the maximum amount of time to get return out of it as well. But I would say probably twelve months after it's paid for itself, just with the color percentage increase. Oh, fantastic! And would you say it gets um, every the rest of the team more excited because that person's coming back with all that extra knowledge as well? So, so I think I think you've got two levels of that again. I think you know that people do suddenly have a newfound respect for the master color experts. I think they understand that you know this person is elite colorist. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but then there's also a very healthy competition. You know, there's you know never underestimate that that you know what what we see is you know stylist one who's done everything right over the, say two years has been given the opportunity to do master color expert. Then you see people say, right, I just need to mimic this. I need to mimic that behavior within the salon to, to become a master color expert as well. And like I said, you know, we, we are hoping to be putting sort of four to eight people on master color program in the next 12 months. If that doesn't say the value that we put in and the value that we see as a whole group, I don't think anything would, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fantastic. We've actually had a question um, from Julie. She's asking, are there any payment plans available for the Master Colour programme? Do you know? Oh, um, I'm sorry, Julie. I wouldn't know, but I'm sure someone from Wella will be looking at this and be able to. But, I mean, I would just get in touch with um, Wella Education. Definitely, and, and we've, know, we've got the link in the um the comments brilliant. as well. Yep, so um, do, do have a look on that link, um, Julie, and yeah. there'll be ways for you to get in touch with Weller Professionals directly to find out the answer to that question mm -hmm. as well. And um, we've got a few questions um, to get to, um, Colin, Great. before we get to the end, but I just want to ask you, what involvement do you as a salon owner do you have in the Master Colour programme? So, as a group, um, over the last probably five years, when you're doing the master color program, you have like a sort of guest artist come and do some days. Um, and for the last five years, that's we've been heavily involved in that. Um, and we are, I just had a conversation early January talking about wanting and wanting to do more of that, which I can't say too much. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I myself, because I sort of predominantly focus on cutting for education, so it's uh, Peter, Kim, and then we are talking about a few other people as well, making that step up. So they'll host days where they'll do creative hair, colours, cuts mm -hmm. with the, within the MCP. So it's not just always theory, it is inspirational. 
Um, yeah. And I know from speaking to the team that do this that they love that. You know, it's it's one of the highlights of the Master Colour programme. Fantastic. And um, hopefully at some point, um, obviously, salons will be reopening again. When yeah. when you do reopen, what what thing, what tools do you use to incentivize your team to help you grow the colour business for them as individuals, but also for you so, as a salon owner? So what, what we try and do is um, a couple of years ago, we we had a, a group meeting of sort of talking about change and stuff. And, you know, what, what we... What we realised is that we had a lot of hairdressers, um, and, I, and I do mean a lot, who were hitting commission regularly. I would say, and they would probably agree, that it wasn't great commission. You know, it was sort of... So we we done just a really simple thing where we, we broke out that... Now, I, I think to myself, you know, I would pretty much do anything for £1,500, mm. OK? So if someone said to me, if you do this, you'll get fifteen hundred pounds. I thought that was, you know, from my sort of management sort of in trying to communicate. Mm. I thought that was quite powerful. Definitely. So what we what we've done is we worked out our base target, and then we just worked out what you needed to do to earn fifteen hundred pound extra a year. Now, what happened is some of the team really understood this. That let's say there was like four or five options. Some of them realised that if they'd done three of them, they'd earn four and a half thousand extra. You know, so people really got it. I've got it here, actually. Well, let's have a little um, look, Colin. So uh, this is on every sort of um, staff room wall. Oh, brilliant. So how and to earn an extra £1,500? Brilliant. Yeah. And, it's, um, and it doesn't really change, but there's a couple of bits. So it's broken down into stylist and senior, and then director and creative and I'll put it down but I'll just talk through a little yeah. bit of it so the first sort of part of it like step one is just to make sure that you do all of your base target so if you break your target by one pound if you do this over a year you'll hit 1500 pound commission you know um so for a stylist and senior it's very slightly different because there's a different pricing point. Mm. So, for example, if they just done three extra clients a week for haircuts, they would make this £1,500. Brilliant. Now, I know that my team have got more than enough time to hit three extra clients. Mm. And then for a director and creative, it's only two because the price point. Yeah. So, mm. in the nicest way, the team who are really fantastic and really been pushing, they don't have to work as hard. Mm. You know, they, they can do slightly less. So would that, would that include the kind of the master cut, the people that have done the master colour programme? Most of our, yeah, but I mean, some of our master colour experts are mm. senior stylists. Yeah. You know, they're not all mm. directors and creative directors. We never work as a company that you have to do 10 it's, years to yeah. get this opportunity. We, we like... You're brilliant straight away. We'll help you now. Fantastic. And hope that we can mm. reap the benefits. We do a massive thing about rebooking. So we talk about, you know, if you do five recommend a friends a week, which is quite big. But if you do that, you'll make the target. One Wellaplex a day. Mm. You know, just one Wellaplex a day on top of your target. You'll smash it. And then we started breaking it down into colour. So... For both sets, it was one cut and blow dry and one full head of highlights. Just do that. It's that small. You know, you're not asking anybody to stay until midnight. No, exactly. Um, yeah. You know, and then, or just two extra colours a week, you know. But again, with this, you know, if you've done any mixture of these mm. two, you'll make 3,000 extra a year. You know, do all five. Mm. You know, you'll make a fortune. And it's... That's what we've been trying to sort of work on over the last couple of years with the team is sort of getting them focused that, you know, our whole mantra is the salon can win and you can win. And we prove it, you know, it's just there in, well, it's there in orange and white, but, you know, black and white is just there for everybody <laughs> to see. Which is brilliant because obviously the first six to eight weeks of reopening, it will be crazy busy. But once things get back into a normal rhythm, having incentives like that to keep the team motivated yeah. and engaged and wanting to grow their colour business yeah, um, will help so, everybody. 
and and I think that there's that realization now that clients' habits changed last year, and we came back to let's say two and a half months of Christmas. Mm. But then we probably, you know, certainly for us, it wasn't sort of all roses. You know, we probably came back to like a six week January and then back up. So I think with stuff like this, it's that importance of rebooking. You know, I talked about it all the way through last lockdown Mm -hmm. and coming out of lockdown. Rebooking is going to be the thing that separates every top stylist in the UK. Most definitely, Colin. That's great advice. 100%. 100%. I'm going to try and whiz through some questions as well because I've just seen the time and the time always disappears. Um, wow, so, yeah. um, Helen has said, oh, she absolutely loves Weather Professionals and she can't wait to get um, her staff back to the academy. Um, she Good. did she did her Master Colour Expert programme years ago. Um, she's asking, is there a refresher course? Yep. So there's, um, again, pre-COVID, there was a, a sort of yearly update um, so if she speaks to either Well Education or even her, like sort of whoever looks after her account to to come on. And I think, you know, last, sorry, so it would be 2019, they managed to do it. I think it was like, I want to say Manchester and London. Um, and then, you know, so we just send the team down, a little bit of social for them, but um, just to really keep that up. And there's also a really fantastic course of sort of how the salon owner can maximize the master color program as well. You know, cause not, I'm not a master color expert, you know, so mm. it's nice for me to go and go, all right, okay, they should be doing this. And, you know, we've taken a lot of learns from that over the years as well. Fantastic, Colin. And do you set further targets for your color um, master color experts once they've achieved the qualifications, especially um, when we, they we, might reach a self-employed status? Um, this person specifically asking. I don't... Right. So, so none of my team are self-employed. They're all employees of Medusa. So I don't know that model, and, and I can't really sort of comment too much on it. And um, we don't have um, a different target for a master color expert because they quite essentially, they were pretty much already hitting their targets. So the fact that they grow their color business means they grow our revenue and they get a higher share of it. You know, so it's just fair. Yeah. Um, so we don't make it harder for them to make more money. We, you know, it's actually easier once you're a master color expert again. Brilliant, that's fantastic. So it's a great incentive to, um, to yeah. put that time and effort into the course. Yeah. Um, Julie, it sounds like the um, Master Colour pro- Programme could be brilliant for you. She said she'd love to do a colour course and she's been asking her local colleges in Cornwall if they offer just colour courses on their own, but they don't offer them. Yeah. Um, so she's desperate to do a colour course. So it sounds like this could yeah. be good for her. So what I would recommend is there's, there's like maybe a couple of days investment before she goes mm. on the sort of master colour expert programme. So just to get, you know, to make sure that she's fully knowledgeable with a sort of like, like I suppose just to make sure that the foundations are ticked. Mm. Um, so, I can't remember if I've got it written down anywhere here, but. Yeah, colour craft essential and colour ca- craft correction. Um, and they, they, that would be like a sort of pre-master colour programme, which would be brilliant. And that's definitely going to be in London. So, um, you know, Cornwall to London, make a, make a couple of days of it, you know. Definitely. Then the people in the studios are fantastic. And again, they can really help make sure that you go on the proper journey and don't yeah. go too fast. Most definitely. And there are some discounts available, aren't there? You can purchase the Master Colour Programme Plus package, which includes the Master Colour um, Programme course, plus the right. two prerequisite colour craft courses, which you can okay. get discounted to 2300 So that's a 20% yeah. saving yeah. with it all in, all included. So that could be one for you to look into there, Julie. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's an amazing value. So yeah, get on to that, Julie, quickly. Yeah, definitely. And as I say, the link's in the comments if you want to yeah. find out more about it, Julie. Um, oh, fantastic. We've got Michelle and Mitchell who says, wow, it's a blast from the past, Colin. Um, she worked with you as a trainee years ago. Um, and she's Hi, now, Michelle. Yeah, so she's tuning in, to, tuning in to see you there, Colin, which is fantastic. And she's working That's in nice. nail, nail tech as well now, which is fantastic. Okay, okay. Um, 
Oh, and Debbie has said she's really enjoying listening to all of your knowledge, Colin, and she's been thinking of doing a Weller um, Professionals Colour course for a while. So this has all been yeah. really informative for her, which is brilliant. Um, and this um, Juliet has said she loves to cut and the more the creative, the better, but she's always lacked confidence when it comes to colouring. And um, what can you rec recommend course wise for someone who kind of lacks that colour confidence, would you say, Colin? So, so I think straight away just now is, you know, immerse yourself in what's happening on sort of uh, within the professional beauty group. So here's this is journal or doing lots of lives. As a whole industry, you know, we've 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 really been super supportive of sharing that knowledge. So there's loads of stuff there now. You know, there's lots of stuff mm -hmm. to get straight away. And then I think once you came back, uh, you know, I, I don't know your particular situation, but make sure that you do go and do some upskills, you know, make sure that you do attend some courses, you know, it's really important to invest in yourself, um, you know, so I would recommend speaking to your well account manager, well education, again, on both their, on their channel as well, you know, there's a lot of great content about, you know, which might just give you a lot mm -hmm. more confidence. There's also the well a hair community page on Facebook, which is, um, you know, really interactive, lots of fantastic stuff, really stepped up during the lockdown as well. So yeah, I think there's loads, but you know, just dip your toe in, you know, don't, don't and don't worry if you miss something either. Um, and also bear in mind that what you like to see may not be what someone delivers. And it's okay, you know, it's we've all got our sort of personal taste and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So just, you know, find the stylist, the group, whatever it is, the manufacturer to make sure that they work compatible with your sort of um, dynamic. Great advice there, Colin. And I guess maybe getting your hands on some dolly heads during lockdown and doing some of these colour tutorials just to build your confidence up before right. doing a, a bigger course. You know, and, and even studio. just like at home, you know, just, just use conditioner. You know, just mm. kind of work work on conditioner, but just see the section patterns, you know. Mm. Um, you know, there is, I, I, I've been so impressed with our sector, our industry, you know, here. Uh, here especially, I think, has just been mm. absolutely amazing and, and so generous with everybody's time, you know. So um, it's, now's a good time to be off and do that, you know. I suppose, like you said, England hopefully are going to get a little bit of a roadmap to sort of normality today. Now's a good time to say, right, this week I want to do this, mm -hmm. next week I want to do this. And yourself focus, you know, before you come back. Definitely. We've got, um, and you're part of it as well, Colin, we've got um, Professional Beauty World, which is a three day event um, starting on Sunday. So it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. We've got lots of business sessions. We've also got a creative color tutorial with um, Robert Eaton. So you might want to tune into that as well and with a dolly head and you could have a go at doing the yeah, colour. Just, just copy, you know, like, yeah. I mean, Robert's just beautiful at doing hair mm. full stop. So, you know, that's like amazing. But yeah, I mean, like, I, I can't wait to next week. I think, you know, those three days sound really packed of, you know, lots of different mm. bits of content for everybody. You know, so I'm, I'm delighted to be part of that next Monday as well. Definitely. I think it's five o'clock if anybody's watching. Yeah, watch five o'clock, yeah. And Colin, <laughs> Colin will be on our business leadership session. So if you've been inspired by the chat we've been having with Colin today and what an amazing salon owner he is and obviously he's HJ's Business Director of the Year as well, do tune in to the um, panel session we'll be having on business leadership. Um, and um, we've had a question from Susan saying, where can she find out where to book on a colour course? And she's based in Sheffield. So, I mean, basically, I think there is an actual, yeah, so education.wella.com. And um, I think that'll take you right through to, to everything. So just, you know, have a look at Wella UK's website and, you know, it'll, it should be easy to, to do it. If not, find out who, who your local um, account manager is or sales guy is and just contact them. They are, some of them are on furlough. But I believe that all of the um, area managers are working. So hopefully, you know, somewhere we can find out who would sort of help in Sheffield. But I would assume that even Manchester's, ah, someone's just put it up. 
So, oh, you know, yeah, there's definitely. a link. Yeah. I've just seen the link arrive. So please Edu education, try that. Education.wella.com. If you go to have a look on yeah. the um, the website, you should be able to find out which um, location would be best for you. There is a number of yeah. different locations. Um, so there is, oh, I'm just having a quick look for you. We've got London, Dublin, Edinburgh, and Manchester. So there's a few yeah. different places there that you could choose to, whichever one might work best for you. And, and also just to everybody who's maybe not been in a sort of studio environment for a while, you will get nothing but a warm welcome. You know, it's not all sort of skinny divas, kind of made up and stuff. They're really beautiful people, really lovely. And like, I love going to the studios. And I, and I really, you know, one of the courses I teach is two days. And I really see that apprehension in the first sort of hour mm. from the students. And then by the second day, it's like for them in their home. So it's a really yeah. warm environment in every studio, you know. So don't be worried about coming. And I don't know if we're trying to wrap up, but one of the things I always say, and I think it's so important, is that just remember that when someone teaches you something, it's, it's natural not to be able to do it. Yeah, you could do it before you start, but when someone shows you something, I always end up with ten thumbs. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, and I'm confident. But and that it's just the, pre the pressure's pressure. on, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I promise myself and every educator I've ever worked with through Wella, you know, you. That's one of the things of that just happens. Mm -hmm. Forget about it, and then we'll we'll work through and sort of enhancing your skills, whether it's color cuts, presentation hair up, whatever, wedding hair, the whole lot, you know, it's, um, it, it, we're just there to help, that's all. Definitely, and I guess you know, it's like, if anything, you get out what you put in, so if you, if you take all of that knowledge and start applying it once you leave the course, yeah, you will, you will be able to develop it and get even better. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, one of the, the most famous sort of things is that, you know, it, the course finishes, at the time it finishes but it starts for you the following day mm. and that's really up to you and I always say get it out of your head as quickly as you can mm. and onto a head you know if you wait three weeks to try that technique you'll forget mm. four of the steps and it won't work and you'll blame the educator or you'll blame the technique and what the reality is it's just your brain has sort of diluted mm. some of that information down so get it out of your head onto that head. And that's why at-home learning just now is great. You can go at your own pace and literally mirror the educator. Fantastic. And Amy said that she did a course with Wella in London in September, and it was a really great experience. It was lovely to get away from the salon madness of the time. And we were using all the techniques in the salon when we were open. So that's fantastic, Amy. Brilliant. Brilliant. I, I so miss being in the studio, mm -hmm. trust me. Definitely. Well, hopefully we'll all be back there very soon, Colin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aaron, we are we are wrapping up. We've gone over time already, um, as we expected to, as always. But um, Aaron was um, absolutely loved your salon incentives that you keep in your staff room. Um, and yeah. he was wondering if he's able to get a picture of it or able to reach out to you so you can get a copy of it. He's, he's got sure. a salon I mean, just Cambridge. Yeah, so he can just contact me through Facebook or Instagram at Colin McAndrew or Colin at Medusa, I think it is. I'm, so I'm 45, I'm, I'm rubbish sometimes <laughs> at social, but I'm, you know, we'll make, yeah, make sure that, you know, Colin McAndrew on Facebook, definitely. And, um, you know, glad, gladly share anything. I'm all, I've always been an open book, you know. Perfect. And we're just one more question because we are, we are getting to the very close to the end, but I think it is a great question, Colin. Sure. Any ideas for keeping apprentices focused? So first of all, biggest challenge for me right now, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, yes, you know, um, we're lucky that, you know, I'm part of um, a training company called Medusa, um, Medusa Training, and the guys who run that and back that have been fantastic at trying to get engagement within. I think, you know, and it's taken this lockdown that, you know, I'm um, when we go back, I'm going to host an, a parents evening. Um, and what I want to do is, just explain that we have a group of teenagers right now who are massively behind through no fault of their own mm -hmm. and no fault of the salon. So we need to work collectively together to, to speed up that gap very quickly. So, and I need to get a buy-in from 
their support bubble from their family and stuff because what I'm going to do is is that I'm going to be doing their normal education but hopefully ramp it up mm. but I'm also going to be offering some sort of free education you know so maybe if we never train in the evening we always train during Medusa time yeah you know we always you know we train mm. Tuesday nine till six all day um and, and we'll do that but I'm thinking that maybe just to sort of close this gap and create brilliant hairdressers mm. we maybe need to do three months of a Wednesday night as well and you know so we need some come and go and just common sense approach to it but I think that this is going to be the biggest challenge I think you know apprentice wages are so you know when they hit a different age they're so difficult for salons to manage and myself included that we have to make sure that we that we collectively go into this together and, and make sure that we produce hairdressers who can carry on and, and create any skill gaps in our industry. That's fantastic advice there, Colin. And everyone tuning in is absolutely just loves your honesty and the passion that comes yes. through. And Michael said that actually. He said, Jim, you're such such great information you've been sharing, and you're such an honest and passionate guy, and that really comes across. And um, so you. thank you for that, because I think that'd be useful for anyone tuning in who is feeling worried about their apprentices. Or the apprentices themselves might be tuning in feeling uh, worried themselves as well. Yeah. You know, my, my team will be shouting at the scene he's a liar, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they won't, Colin. Uh, and we've just put, and um, also we've just put into the comments your Instagram handle for anyone who did want yeah. to contact you. It's Colin underscore Medusa on Instagram. Yeah. So um, Colin's more than happy um, to for you to reach out to him if you yeah, want to get a copy absolutely. of his of his incentives board. Um, and then Amy's just said, great idea, Ari, parents evening. We are having the same problem. Thanks so much. We definitely need to get more time with them. And I guess that is about making more time like you say there's just yeah. not enough hours yeah. in the working day yeah yeah you know yeah. like it's 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 not going to be serviceable in a sort mm -hmm. of working hour um so we need to find a way that but it has to be understood you know it has to be that you know this is free education yeah so we need to make yeah. sure that it's attended and stuff you know it's not seen as a chore it's seen as we are giving yeah. back to you you've got to uh, appreciate it yeah definitely. yeah Oh, fantastic. Well, Colin, it's been a, a brilliant session. I feel like we're all much more um, knowledgeable now on the Master Colour Experts programme, which is fantastic. And if you've been inspired to find out more about it, please do click the link in our comments, which takes you directly through to the Master Colour Experts programme information, or you can always go to education.wella.com as well. And as we've discussed, it's a 14-day um, colour course, isn't it? Um, Colin, that yeah. would bring bring your colorist back to the salon, ready and raring to go, yeah. with their expertise just, just, at another level. Yeah, and just make sure that you send the right person. You know, mm. that's the that's the key for you to maximise it. Mm. You know, you you'll develop them, but you want to develop your business, and and you know, don't be embarrassed to say that. Yeah, definitely, it's got to be a two way street, hasn't it? Because you're investing win -win. in them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has to be a win win. Brilliant. And the fact that you're planning to send another, how many people was it, did you say? So so we would like in the next sort of 12 months, once last year's mm. section, we, we would really love to do um, between six and eight in the next mm. sort of 12 months, you know, uh, possibly more. But, you know, I budgets. Uh, definitely. But that says it all, doesn't it, Colin, that you see it as I, a exactly. worthwhile investment. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, you know, and, and you know, we've had numerous people over the years attend it. Fantastic. Well, as I say, more information, please do click the link in the comments or go to education.wella.com. And Colin is also very happy for you to reach out to him as well if you've got yeah. any specific questions from his personal Definitely. experience as a salon owner, which is brilliant. You know, Laura, like I might not have an answer, you know, uh, you know, the situation might be alien or mm. but nothing ventured by just sort of sharing and sort of touching base you know definitely sharing experiences it always helps doesn't it and that's why our yeah. industry has been so fantastic throughout all yeah. these different lockdowns because we've been sharing yeah. our knowledge or lack of knowledge in certain places yeah and then trying to fill those gaps to make sure everyone goes back to the salon yeah. ready and raring to go which is brilliant yeah Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, we do hope that there will be some positive news in terms of some form of reopening plan um, for all the different parts of the UK. Um, Scotland, I'm sure, won't be too far behind, um, Colin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you know, I mean, 
that we just need to ride it out you know it is what it yeah, is I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm past sort of killing myself about it no definitely but like you say it's getting in getting all of that education as much as you can while while you yeah. can and um, yeah. while it's available so make the most make the most of all of the different sessions that are available at the moment and then face to face absolutely education once it's back on the horizon yeah yeah uh, with the yeah. we'll, the we'll welcome you to the Weller program. studios brilliant yes we look forward to seeing you all there yeah. Oh, thanks yeah. so much. Have a great day, everyone. And thanks so much again, Colin. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.